Blade versus TBCBM. Both kind of similar in a way, in the sense that they are promising talents in their region. I would estimate Blade's current power level, if you want to call it that, a little above TBC though. Of course, he's playing on an inferior ping, but I would give the edge to the entertaining Moldovian. So let's see what happens in our first map on Concealed Hill. You have TBC in the top right, playing of course as the undead. We saw race switching before by 15 sway, but we're not going to see it here. The Chinese with the undead and Blade from Moldova with the humans. Blade quite insistingly recently told me that Happy actually wasn't all that good. So if Happy represents no obstacle for him, then TBC might be an easy walkover. We'll see. Standard builds. Wait, no. Oh, no, not standard builds. Not at all standard builds. This is a ghoul build. And that can be very powerful early on, being played disruptively. against human, against fast expansion. And that's a playstyle that many humans aren't used to anymore. So this could work out very well. The footy should have seen it though. DK coming over instantly for the level one harass. And the ghouls come out. Oh, even backpack. Wow. Oof. That's going to be a lot of early pressure. Cool. It's going to be a fun early game. A are under Do not have an arcane in the main. It will be a fast expansion. Oh. Ghouls actually creep this camp solo first. Hmm. Okay. No tech yet. All right, I am intrigued. This is certainly outside the norm. Ooh, from TBC. Okay, but here comes the expansion. And this is where the ghouls are supposed to be right now. They are coming, but it's only three. Three ghouls is not really enough, in my opinion. DK got close to the level up. Oh, nice last hit with the right click on the water elemental. And Blade expand abandons the expansion for now. So, yeah. Apparently, TBC here with absolutely a good early game. Oh. AM close to getting surrounded. Has the cloak though. But a shop is close by, so dust could be purchased. So, militia called again. Second try. Lots of militia this time. I like that Blade doesn't stop making peasants. He needs to have high lumber to finally start his tech soon. And there we go. More skeletons. Give the level up to the AM. And now with level 2 water elementals, it's much easier to deal with these ghouls. Blade played it safe. Delaying the expansion, but I think that's okay. Because with the ghoul build, the under tech is also later, as we can see. Still not so close to done. As the AM is level 3, can afford to give up. The big overseer. But of course TBC wants to snag it. And he gets it. One peasant dies. Focus fire by the watch elemental there. Not quite perfect. One of those ghouls could have perhaps been killed. But so many peasants were called. That even if a few die. It should still be fine. Clock on the AM really being useful here. Man, that's a lot of kills though. Oof. It is turning out to be quite a few kills now. Could be some gold mine juggling back here. But the water elemental will clean this up over time. Oh, he's gonna get a dust from the ghoul. That's pretty cute. But AM should be healing up enough. 
Oh, look at this. He's gonna have a sneaky dust reveal. Is he gonna try to surround him? No, uh, no, okay, nothing. This cloak, really, really helpful. Expansion is coming up now, but tier two is finished. Lich is coming, tier three is on the way. And that certainly was quite a delay of this expo. No question about that. One more peasant here should be falling. Oh my god, can you save the peasants? Wow, look at that footy block. Damn, that was sweet. That was a cool move. It's also like a psychological victory. When an undead commits a coil to a peasant, he really, really, really wants that kill. And when you deny that, mm, feels good as the human. So slaughterhouse coming. No fiends yet. Is this just gonna be friend- Oh, look at the staff play! Onto the scout footy! That should be a cancel. Footy's gonna die, but that's fine. Oh, and more footies are coming in. Dude! Blade! With some really nice plays. Oof! That was a big Nova, though. Ouch. That one hurt. Second water elemental is ready. And that is the downside of ghouls past the early game. They die very fast to watch elementals. Oh, nice save there though. And the rest of the ghouls are fine as it seems. But good delay of the slaughterhouse. That really makes any kind of destroyer push fairly hard to execute. But we have a second slaughter coming in. So this is looking like the... Oh, is he going to scout for this? Blade, are you going to scout this? Does he see the double slaughter? I... Okay, daytime, he should be seeing the one in the back. He should be seeing it. And that means towers. Towers, 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 towers everywhere. Six towers in the main, seven towers at the expo. Something like that. A or quick gyros. Attack. Maybe quick gyros could work. But tier two is still far away. Towers seem to be the better choice. Tier 3 for TBC. Already done. We have Frenzy Ghouls coming in. Destroyer form in a moment as well. It's not too many ghouls left though. Only five. AM will be level four, four very soon. That's not enough towers though. That's not at all enough towers. If four destroyers fly in, all these towers are instantly dead. And Blade must know that destroyers are coming. If this was my base, my statue would land Blade's right here. Are under Town is under siege. Oh. The round doesn't quite work out. AM's level 4 and is in a good position now to go for another little push into the main. And that's probably a good idea. Would love to see a heal scroll here as well. Go for it. Yeah. Heal scroll and invol. Nice. Replenishment as well. It's gonna use that with the invol, I'm pretty sure. And yeah, so far the destroyer push isn't ready yet. Good timing. Really good timing by Blade. And that forces TBC back. And these, this army being forced back already is a success. AM stats into the main to make this even more obnoxious. Not so easy for the DK and the Lich now to reach the footies. And a few ghouls being taken out. Well, actually, only one. But it, again, was a lot of time bought. Time for Blade to... What did he get? Tier 3 tech. And double workshop. I love the double workshop. He knows it's gonna be destroyers, so mass gyros coming out soon. A player's forces are under attack. Smart play by Blade. Also managing his resources really well. Tons of lumber peasants at the expo. Quite a few in the main. Should perhaps power build these two, but whatever. Should still be working out well enough. Oh, wow, even went for another safety TP. 
I guess he did have quite a bit of gold. And here come the gyros. Oh. He doesn't have this one in the control group, though, as it seems. That's a problem. Okay, there we go. Now he does. Breaker's also coming. Breaker's gyros. Blade has to hold. This undead army doesn't transition well into the late game. This is not a fiend-based army. This is a pure destroyer army. Which gets destroyed, if you will excuse my pun, by gyros. A player's forces are under attack. Oh, acolyte number six coming. TBC wants to expand, most likely on the hill. Gyros being pulled in the main for now. Oh, we actually have two here. Good scouting by the Gyro as well. May even have seen the uh, Acolyte right there. And since there's no fiends, really easy for the Gyros to scout. No real danger of getting webbed and killed. Alright, Destroyer Morph coming in. It's Morphin time. I don't think that's enough Destroyers though. It might be enough destroyers to kill the towers, but it certainly is enough for that. But once the destroyer run out of mana, they're going to get destroyed by the gyros, I believe. Black cannons has been researched, the AoE damage is really good, and the destroyers are almost dead already. DK gets level 4, that makes the whole army very speedy. Actually, only one destroyer got killed, but the other two were damaged so heavily that they can't fight anymore. Gyros are on the chase. 64 supply for Blade. Oh, finds the Lich in the back. If he gets that hero kill, that would be tremendous. Nice block from the MK as well. Stormbolt is cooling down. It's ready right now. But not too much follow-up damage to a Stormbolt here, really, by Blade. Lich gets one more kill, but that was... Coil, excuse me. But that was the last bit of the mana. Third hero comes out just perfectly in time. The Paladin now joins the field and will provide the Holy Light. Oh my god, how close was that? Super close. Stormbolt again. Lich focused again, but he's very fast. With a 30% movement speed. Bonus. Carrion Swarm first, by the Dreadlord not being too impactful. And onto the hill, Blade goes. He's looking really good here, man. This is a super solid game by the Moldovian. Sataria, thank you for the 21 month resub. I am almost level five. I'd love to see Aura level three, actually. It's all about having Stormbolts and Holy Lights in the late game, in my opinion. A player's forces are under attack. The upgrade from level two to level three elemental is nice. But not necessarily a game winner. In my opinion. But he is going Elemental 3, which certainly is good as well. Because you have the counter to destroyers already with Gyro, so you know you're gonna have. You know your water elements are gonna have value. Level 2 Pally, MK almost level 3, a Scourge Bone Chimes for the Knights. Really nice. And now it's Knight's Gyros time. Only now the upgrade's coming in. I like that as well. First you want to have out a couple of Knights to know that you're fight ready. And then when you have the time and space, then you want to go for the upgrades. 1-1. One, one. Speaking of upgrades on the Knights and the Breakers. More upgrades coming. Even Gyros getting repaired. Man, this is a mega solid game by Blade. And it's looking outstanding for him now. Ooh, is TBC switching into melee? It's going into ghouls and A-bombs. Interesting. And I guess he's gonna get the aura now? No. Okay, he's going melee but without aura. Vamp aura, that is. Gets one freebie on the priest. Trying to distract right now. Is TBC, of course, with this play, and with his mass movement speed and frenzy ghouls, these run buys are e easy to execute for him. Well, the DK in the bag needs to be careful. There was a good attack, getting a couple of peasants. 
But thanks to the outstanding lumber econ from earlier, these peasants can just be replaced with the lumber peons. Peasants. So it wasn't that painful. Only four peasants in the main. It's gonna decrease income a little, but not by that much. The big story here is almost 80 supply and high hero levels. Aside from the pally. For blade. Gyro numbers are a little low for my liking. Oh, little creep jack here coming in by TBC. Throw the beast, getting dispelled quickly. Paladin has to use the divine shield here early on. Do we have a staff, by the way? No staff on blade. That's kind of weird. And yeah, gyro's pretty much all dead. Production wasn't kept up well enough, in my opinion. Rather than sorks, I think more gyros should have been the better would have been the better call. But what, level 3 water elementals here come in big as well. Level 3 water elementals cannot really be beaten by only two destros. Has to be like three, in my opinion. And now even a tank coming in. One tank to attack the expansion. And the rest of the army dealing with the undead force. Outside of low gyro numbers, this is still looking really, really, really good for blade. Even almost level 3 paladin now. And a few more gyros are coming in from the main. That ghoul is the level up and it's a big one. And boom! There we go. Level 3 pally. Finally good healing. Tries to focus that paladin but Divine Shield is ready again. Stormbolt Highlight combo. Almost found the kill. Lich gets saved there just barely. Are under but TBC is against the ropes. And this tank at the expansion doing a great job. And there we go. Boom! How much did he mine? Oh, I did mine a little bit. 820, I think. But now, back to one base. 41 supply only. A couple more statues coming in. Destroyers are supposed to be the saviors, but... Don't know if that's gonna work. Don't think it's gonna work. 2-2 two, two upgrades now on the knights and breakers. Inner fire as well. 4-3-3 three, three heroes. This game is almost over. I think Blade shouldn't even TP back here. He should just keep up the pressure in the main. And he does. Instead, he is the one to force the TP by TBC. MK looking for the target. What's the Stormer going to fly on? Carrion Swarm against the Gyros, but it's not that good. Only level 1 Carrion. Even level 4 now for the MK. Bash. Comes a little bit better. And more and more kills. Stormbolt! Holy Light! Nope, no Holy Light. Coil once more, but that's it. Everything is falling apart for TBC. GG and 104 Blade. Really well played. Like, I think other than not making more than... Like, after the first couple of engagements, there was only, like, six gyros left. And sometimes, in closer games, it can happen that then destroyers take over and you lose the engagement, you lose momentum, and you can start being in trouble. So you really always want to make sure you have enough gyros out. I think that was the one mistake by Blade. Not having the proper amount of gyros once. Now, at the most important time, when the Destros first came out, there he did have the appropriate number of gyros, and was dealing very well with those destroyers. But later on, he perhaps kind of forgot about production. But that's what, like, that was one minor mistake. That didn't really matter in that game, because he was so far ahead. But other than that, this was just a super, super good game by Blade. Pretty impressed, man, I have to say. Extremely convincing game one. Map two will be Northern Isles, which I wouldn't really say is a better human map. It is an easier expansion, yes. But not that easy.
And level 3 timings can be a lot more difficult here. For the AM. Something, by the way, we haven't mentioned yet. All the players today, of course, are in the prize money ranks already. Fourth place gets at least a little bit of something with $60. Blade now on his way to make it top two. If he should win here as well. TBC showed us an unusual build to start with. With the ghoul build. Pressure early on was pretty good. He slowed down Blade's expansion rather well, we have to admit. But the weakness of the ghouls were exposed when Blade looked for a smart engagement before Frenzy was ready. What's the meta versus humans nowadays? It is Tedfiend build, which is exactly this build. And then tier 3 rush on 3 fiends with a lich second. And then with tier 3 destroyers and either pit lord with rain of fire to siege and kill the expansion. Or dark ranger to creep up the map, contest and fight and counter expand. Or if you fail to kill the expo with a pit lord, you can also counter expand with that. Pretty stressful game, oftentimes, and matchup for human. You have to be ready to defend at any point. And once the undead gets to four fiends and one statue, you lose map control, meaning you have the weaker army. And you always have to play defensively. And there's lots and lots and lots of points where you can die. So you have to be really, really solid in your defense. And have to know what to have at what time to survive. Number of footmen, defend, towers, wall of, MK, tech, gyros, knights. You need to hit all those timings well. Otherwise, uh, a good unit is going to kill you. Standard creep route here for Blade to start things off. DK instant harassing. Old school happy style. Nowadays normally we see either green camp into expo harass or green into green into expo harass. And this kind of surprises me because DK arrives and there's nothing really to do. Skeleton scout the AM over at his green now, or oh, would be a big last hit. But Blade plays around it nicely. We'll get his level 2 here. Skeletons are walking into the main, but very quick militia morph, so skeletons can't do too much. I like this by Blade. Constantly more and more and more and more and more peasants. To always have enough to call to militia and to never have the issue of running out of lumber. Because again, tech timings are very important. A player's forces are under attack. For some reason, I keep forgetting about the results today. I don't know why. Thank you, new hero. TBC walk up the creeps to trigger the bloodlust early. To put a bit more damage on Blade. How many peasants is that? It's like seven. That is the norm nowadays. Oh, 140 there was hurt, gets out, gets taken out early. And this militia usage is not working out too well. Interesting pull for TBC. Seems to be pretty effective. DK is getting pressured by the AM and two footies. That's exactly the way you want to do it. But this weird creep camp is all over the place. So peasants have to retreat for now. But a second wave of peasants is coming in. Again, because there's so many peasants made earlier. And still more peasants. Footies, peasants, footies, peasants. 
That's exactly what you want in the early game. Keep on making footies and peasants. And yeah, the DK killed a few peasants, but uh, still not level 2. He killed one peasant, one footy. And the expansion might be delayed, certainly. But this is still a good early game for Blade. Lost a total of, I think, three peasants here. That's all right. And does get level three. A player's forces are under attack. Has to wait a little bit for the expo. There we go. Really good militia calls over and over. I like that a lot. Tier two is finished. Lich is coming. Lich coming at the same time as expo. That shows you that this expansion absolutely is delayed. So Blade needs to make sure to start the tech very soon. Still making more peasants. And an arcane coming up as well. So yes, Blade was slowed down, but so was the DK. Progress extremely slow, only about 100 experience. A are under I like attack. the scouting, Watch Elemental checking this pathway. AM checking the other two. With how delayed this expo is, Blade really doesn't want to suffer any more economic losses, any more peasant kills. Footy's checking out the main. Alright, here we go. So yeah, Blade does need to start this tech really, really soon. Because tier 3 should be on the way for TBC. Yeah, starts early. A player's forces are under attack. Zick Brand, thank you for the 26 month resub. There we go. Tier 3 comes in, so now it's time for shop. Maybe a few more towers. Lumber mill. Oh, I like the sentry a lot. Covers this area over here, which is a very popular run by avenue. A player's forces are under attack. Defend also should be coming in now. Maybe he has it already? I'm a big fan of high footy numbers, very high footy numbers, with a fast expansion style. 8, 9, maybe 10. This tower wall also is very nice. You don't want to have just one tower in front and the rest in the back, because if the forward tower falls, peasants can easily get attacked. The SimCity wall off could perhaps be a little bit better. A couple of farms here. Does he have defend or not? He doesn't have defend. Ooh, okay. Committing into these fiends without defend is pretty scary. Is he intentionally skipping defend? Once there's four fiends, these footies will all get shredded. Yeah, and the orb. Footies are gonna outl outlive their usefulness very, very soon. And there's actually good timing here for TBC. Destroyer form. Fiends. Look at the main. A single arcane tower. That's nothing. Blacksmith coming as well. Lumber Fork Blade is really good, so you should be going for MK and Tier 3 instantly. I am creeping further up to level... I really like the timing here as well. Like, when there's only two to three fiends, the AM is still pushing and being disruptive, and he knows, okay, more fiends will be coming, his tech will be approaching. So now I fall back, now I creep my level 4 for the level 2 aura. I think Blade is playing this really well. So here we go. Tier 3 coming. Mountain King as well. And Sanctum and single workshop only. No towers in the main. This is the big weakness. Question is, is TBC going to scout for that? Not all undeads always do. Destroyer farm just finished, I believe. It should have. Illusions immediately popping all three. Scouting around. Double Sanctum? What? Tier 3 Double Sanctum? 
Mass breakers? With tier 3? That's weird. Oh, it looks like TBC absolutely did scout the main. And we'll see. This is an easy breach. Gyro's only starting to come out now. I don't think they have flag cannons yet. However, also only one destroyer. Blade going into upkeep quickly. That's what you needed to do. And here we go. Two destroyers being morphed. When is Blade gonna engage? Ideally, you want to flank with the footies from behind and the militia from the other side. A few militia can be called over here. Blade is patiently waiting for the destroyer mana to run out for more gyros to come in. Against two destros, you want to have nine, maybe ten gyros. Oh, he commits in quite earlier. Quite a bit earlier. One gyro falls, but also fiends being forced back. There's a statue on the ground. Oh, the legend in a bad position! That is the easiest surround of all time. It's not closed yet. Okay, now it's closed. Needs to TP transfer, but doesn't manage to do it. Oh, the lich didn't move with the rest of the army. And that was the easiest Stormbolt surround of all time. I think the fiend numbers here for TBC are just a little bit too low. I think you want to go five fiends and do that early. You can apply so much pressure and then later on you have plenty of webs, you have plenty of focus fire potential. But that was the first push held by Blade, but it won't be the last one. He needs to get ready for the next push. MK creeps up more, nice tank items for him, wand also pretty good. And tier 3 about to finish. Paladin on the way. It's starting to look better and better now for Blade. Knights also coming. Yep, tier 3 is starting to kick in. Over fire would also be really good. And TBC is committing deep into the main. This will most likely end up in a TP. Oh, coil on cooldown. One fiend should be an easy kill over here. <laughs> Even bloodlust on these footies. Thanks to the spell steal from the creep camp. And that's a TP forced. Don't know if a destroyer did die there. Yeah, it did. We did have two destros earlier. Now TBC down to one and in deep, deep, deep trouble. Goes for a banshee house now. Trying to tech transition, but at this point it is very late. Where's the pally? Ah, there he is. Paladin is out, and knights are on the way. Not too many upgrades yet on the breakers and knights. Only one single attack upgrade, but more will be coming. And Blade now finally reclaims map control. The first time in a long time. And with that, can confidently creep in the middle. As is Pally and MK. Actually, only the Pally requires levels. Mountain King level 3 already. Wow, it's going to be a great jump start for this paladin in the middle. Could be instant level 3. These two camps together. Uh, but the Warlord is gone, so perhaps not quite level 3. Scourge Bone Chimes again. Once more. Very nice for these knights. A town is under sea. Oh, skeletons in the main. That's pretty annoying. The Arcane Tower was taken out earlier. In the meantime, TBC at the red. He needs some big items. He needs the Cadgas Pipe. Oh, he gets it! Alright. That is certainly outstanding. And this... If the Pally gets this camp solo, he's certainly gonna be level 3. Not that easy to creep without the other two heroes' help, though. Kind of surprised that Blade isn't parking a footman down here. Maybe he did have one earlier. There we go. Level 3 on the pally. And the big item. About to get picked up. Bit of cunning. Okay. That's pretty trash. But the army is looking good. 75 supply for Blade. Looking very much like he's gonna make this a 2-0 here now. 
Army for TBC is just way too small. DK gets slowed. Stormbolt, Highlight. Didn't even have the time for the heal pot. And that seems to be that. I was expecting Blade to look a little bit stronger here in this matchup, but boy, is he blowing TBC out of the water. Honestly, TBC, not much chance in this best of three, if you ask me. A few drivers are dying, though, so once again, destroyers might be able to take over. And destroyers are definitely needed against this slow. I'm normally not a fan of Sorks so early into the game. I think Sorks only really you want in high upkeep. But if TBC doesn't morph destroyers, then of course, hey, why not? Sorks are great. Oh my god. Three level ups around the corner here for Blade. I don't think he's gonna hit them all from this camp. Level 4 Pally, that's pretty good. Could be Devotion Aura. Oh, he's going for level 2 Divine, wants to play it safe. Is this Death Pack time? No. Aura. <laughs> Even control magic here against the Skeletons. There's also more experience for the AM. And that is level 5. Very good level up, regardless of he go whether he goes elemental or aura. And guess what? We have a few more creeps here, and that's gonna be level 4 MK. He already got level 4 MK. What do we have in the shop? Uh, not the greatest. Hellstone. Oh! Legion Doomhorn! Just became available. Let's go, Blade. Legion Doomhorn. That's totally worth the 500 gold. No, not getting it. Getting more upgrades instead. 2-2 two, two already on the Knights. 3-2 coming in. Still no staff by Blade. Ah, oh, no, he does have one staff. Oh, Pally getting focused pretty hard. But does have the time for the Divine Shield. DK, oh, dangerous position. Stormbolt is cooling down. Stormbolt is ready now. Nice dodge with the TP. Aiming for the casters in the back as well. Takes out one Sork at least. Oh, Banshees have Curse on Autocast. This could be easily reflected by the Breakers. There we go. Foot is somehow still alive, amazingly. They will be slowly dying here. But they have done their jobs. Water Elemental is big and scary. Versus being reflected over and over. Wait, is that... Ah, TBC! He actually possessed the knight. Okay, that was kind of a cute play. Oh, staff could have saved that knight, but... Nope. So, another knight stolen by TBC. It's kind of not even looking too bad for TBC here, maybe. Oh, but the DK. And the Lich. Stormbolt is ready. I think. That lich is dead. Good night! That is Blade making it through. GG from TBC. He will be playing in the third place match, but our grand final is gonna be Blade versus 15 Sway.